Welcome to Electro Online. Here's our first video in a series of videos on triple integrals. And the question is, what is a triple integral? Why do we need them? What do we use them for? And essentially, a triple integral is used to find the volume of an object. Now, I know that we've been able to find volumes using single or double integrals, but sometimes you need to be able to do triple integrals to find the volume of an object, or there's other many other applications we can do with triple integrals, but essentially it's like finding the volume. We're actually integrating over the x direction, the y direction, and the z direction. So through an example, we can show you what we really mean with all that. But here you can see that if we're going to find the volume of something, it's going to be equal to a triple integral. We're going to integrate three times, each time over one of the three dimensions. And of course, we can have triple integrals in the Cartesian coordinate system, or what we call the rectangular system. We can have it in cylindrical systems, and we can also have it in the spherical uh, method. So we'll see that later in later videos. Notice that each time we do an integral over the x dimension, the y dimension, or the z dimension, we have to have limits in the x direction, limits in the y direction, and limits in the z direction. The key to doing triple integrals is that when you integrate one of, the two, one of the three dimensions, the other two dimensions act as if they are simply constant, so you don't have to worry about them. And it often is that the limits here may be written in terms of the other variables, and we'll see an example of that in just a moment here. So here we have a wedge, or I should say a truncated wedge. It's two units high here, five units at the end. It is six units long and it's four units wide, two units from the origin here and two units from the origin there. So what we do here is we find a very small volume element, a small little dv, and the dv is simply a product of the small little change in the x direction, the small little change in the y direction, and the small little change in the z direction. So dv is dx times dy times dz. When we integrate that volume element dv, we can integrate dx, dy, dz, with the appropriate limits. So through a simple example here, we're going to show you how to do that. So in this case, the volume of that wedge or that truncated wedge is equal to the triple integral of simply our little volume element dx, dy, dz. And what happens here is to find the limits, what we're going to do here is we're going to first integrate that little volume element in the z direction then we're going to integrate it in the y direction, and then we're going to integrate it in the x direction. So first we get a pillar that has the cross-sectional area dx times dy, and it has wide z, or I should say height z, depending upon where we are here. Then we're going to integrate it in the y direction, so now we have like a very slice, a very thin slice that has width dx, height z, and with six units, and then we're going to integrate into the x direction to find the total volume. So that's what we mean by a triple integral. We first integrate in one direction, then the second direction, then the third direction to get the entire volume. So when we integrate in the z direction, our limits will be from zero to the top here, and notice that the top here is described in terms of y. So we're going to start with integrating in the z direction, then in the y direction, then in the x direction. So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to rearrange the, the um, differentials here. We'll put the dz there and then the dx over here. That shows we'll integrate the dz first, then the dy, then the dx. The z limits are going to be from 0 to 1 half y plus 2. The y limits are going to be from 0 to 6. In the x limits, well, what I can do here is if I'm straddling across the y-axis here, half of it is over here, half of it is there, I can integrate from 0 to 2 and simply multiply times 2 to get the entire volume. So I'm going to put a 2 in the front and have my x limits from 0 to 2. That's the same thing as going from minus 2 to 2 without the 2 in front. So now I go ahead and I start integrating dz first. And of course, the integral of dz is simply z. So this is equal to, now we have a double integral left for the x limits. We go from 0 to 2. And sometimes it's good to write that this is an x limit. This is a y limit. Don't have a lot of room here. And this is a z limit, so we can keep track of what the limits are and what the integrals are. And of course, you could put x equals 2 at the top, y equals 6 at the top, and z equals 1 half y plus 2 at the top. 
So from 0 to 2 for x, from 0 to 6 for the y, we still have a 2 in the front here, and now we have dz integrated becomes z, and z will be evaluated from 0 to z being 1 half y plus 2. And we still have the dy and the dx differentials. Okay, now when we plug in the limits, notice when we plug in the upper limit, we get 1 half y plus 2. When we get plug in the lower limit, we get 0. So this can now be written as the double integral from 0 to 2 for x, from 0 to 6 for y. And this we get the quantity 1 half y plus 2, and we have dy dx remaining. So now we're going to integrate the second integral. And now we're going to do it for y, and so we integrate this. Again, this remains as a constant, so this is equal to the integral. Now we have a single integral left for x equals 0 to 2, and when we integrate this, we get 1 half y to the second power divided by 2. Well, yeah, I can just go ahead and do that. And then we have plus 2y, and we're going to evaluate that from y equals 0 to y equals 6, and we still have a dx left over there. Now notice that this is actually 1 quarter times y to the uh, second power. When we plug in 6 here, we get 36 divided by 4, which is 9. So this is equal to the integral from x equal 0 to 2. And here, when we plug in the, the values, the upper limit, we get 9 plus. When we plug in 6 here, we get 2 times 6, which is 12. And let me check that 36 over 4. Yes, that's indeed 9. And then we have still have the dx over here. So this is equal to 21. And of course, I keep forgetting to put my 2 in there. I can do that. Can't forget about my 2. Put a 2 in there. Put a 2 in there. And now what we have here is we have 21 times 2, which is 42. 42 times the integral of dx. And we go from 0 to 2. So now we do our last integral in the x direction. And so this is equal to 42 times x evaluated from 0 to 2. Plug in the upper limit, we get 2. Plug in the lower limit, we get 0. So simply, we get that the volume is equal to 2 times 42, or 84. So notice that's how we work with triple integrals. We find our small little volume element. In this case, we're working with the rectangular coordinate system, so it's dx times dy times dz. We have three integrals. We have to identify the limits of integration, and that depends upon, of course, what we're dealing with here. In the first place, we're integrating the z direction, so our z limit goes from z equals 0 at the bottom to z equals a function of y at the top. That's why it's better to start integrating with the dz first. It becomes a z, plug in the limits. And then we're going to integrate in the y direction. So now we go from left to right. Our limits are from 0 to 6. And then when we integrate this, we get this. Evaluate the limits. And now finally we integrate in the x direction. dx becomes x. Evaluate the limits. And that's how we do a triple integral. Now, this is, of course, a very simple triple integral. They get to be quite a, little, a bit more complicated. But at least you can see the methodology of how it's done. If you're wondering whether or not you can integrate another dimension first, the answer is yes, you can, and most likely you'll get the exact same answer, provided you didn't make any mistakes. However, sometimes it makes more sense to start with one of the dimensions, especially when one of the limits is a function of one of the other variables, and it's probably better to do that first. But with a little practice and with some examples, we'll show you that, yes, indeed, we can interchange the order of integration, and yes, you typically get the same result, provided we didn't make any mistakes. And that's how it's done.